Are you a leader that has a high performer who is very rude to their coworkers? If you are, you're not alone. And in this video, I am going to address some best practices, good, better, and best. I am Karen Valencic. I am the author and founder of Spiral Impact, the power to get it done with grace. And I've worked with leaders and teams for over three decades particularly in the area for improving their performance through conflict mastery, because that is where the best engagement and innovation comes. I have on numerous occasions have had leaders ask me this specific question, what do I do with this person that's rude? And I, of course, I start out like I always start out, which is, well, what have you done so far? And oftentimes what I hear people say is, I have told them to be nice and it hasn't worked. Well, and that leads me into what I call the first phase, which is a good practice. So a good practice is not to use words like nice. Nice is very ambiguous. And quite frankly, I think nice can often be construed as an unspoken lie because it can be very not authentic. So what I suggest you do instead, give them feedback that's based upon behavior. And this is gonna be, of course, contingent on what the work is and what your culture is and all of that. But examples could be, I need you to make sure to check off with all your coworkers before you make a change. And um, another thing you could do is say, before you talk, I'd like you to stop and pause and think, is what I'm about to say helpful? And is it kind? Kind is where it lifts the person up rather than down. And it's a, a, it's a lot different than nice. Another example could be is to have them reflect upon the strengths of their coworkers. Write it down and review it with you. So you can have them start thinking about what do these people have to offer. Moving on to the better, the better best practice. Have them do a high quality research personality assessment. What I use in these circumstances is Everything Disc by Wiley, The Productive Conflict. And that is a fantastic assessment. And this person can learn about what their personality style is, what its strengths are, what, where the fallbacks are, and how it relates to all these other personalities. And in that assessment, you also have the ability to do a comparison with another person. And it gives, again, very behavioral-based ideas in terms of how to handle that. I have another video in which I go into that in great detail, and I will put a little marker up here so you can watch that. Now, the best practice to incorporate the good practice and the better practice that we just talked about, but add in with that team development. Team development is where you get the group, the entire team together, so you all begin to learn the same language. I always do that. I do some fun stuff with how to master conflict in a way that brings us all forward and gives us the best creation and respect. And then I invite people to reflect on some questions that I have and dive into some really meaningful dialogue about that. And, and then we create a credo. It is a short list of yes or no questions that they can hold themselves accountable to in the way they interact with each other. And the best part of that process is actually the creating part of it and the dialogue that happens. So that what happens next is you have something you've all agreed to that you can continually refer back to. And sometimes when we do this process, it creates some clarity for people around whether this is where they wanna be or not. Now, only once in, in hundreds of teams I've done this with has a high performer decided to leave. And that was actually a blessing. And when they left, everybody else's performance rose up. Hey, if you have found this valuable, please subscribe and like. It helps me get some more views on here and spread the word. But until next time, I thank you so very much for listening in. Bye-bye.